Yes. You might know our next guest voice from CBC Radio's As It Happens and Morningside, or you might recognize him as the winner of the 1996 Yuck Yuck's Funniest New Comic Competition. His relaxed observational humor just earned him the star spot on CBC's Comics 100th episode called Straight Out Ottawa. Please welcome Don Kelly. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, my name is Don Kelly, and I'm a native Canadian. Not a lot of us do in stand-up, and people are always telling me, oh, you gotta play that up, that's unique. I was told what I should do is use my Indian name as my stage name. Well, I'm gonna stick with Don Kelly because my Indian name is Runs Like a Girl. <laughs> well, thanks, but I'm not terribly proud of that, to be honest. But The great thing is I, I get the best questions when people find that out, like I'm the spokesperson for my culture all of a sudden, you know? And just a few weeks ago, this woman, best question I've ever had, she wanted to know, as a native Canadian, would I be celebrating Thanksgiving? And it's not, not a bad question, not a bad question. I couldn't resist, though, you know? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, last year I had a traditional native Thanksgiving. Yeah, the European guy who lives next door came over, claimed he'd discovered my apartment, and now he's living in the place. <laughs> Oh, he kept a little spot in reserve for me. It's uh, right next to the cat's litter box, thanks a lot. You know, it's not a lot of potential, but hey, I'm thinking of opening a casino, so. <laughs> uh, applauding my pain, thank you very much. I appreciate that. I, uh... So it's nice to be here in uh, the big city. I'm actually from uh, Ottawa, and it's a beautiful city if you've been there, but uh, I hate it because it's a big government town, you know? And I've hated the government since like junior high. Uh, let's say I was in junior high when the government decided that Canada should go metric. And I remember it well because, you know, that was the year all the dope dealers got straight A's. <laughs> I think we found the demographic of the show here. That's great, yeah. It was the weirdest time to be in school, you know, because I remember the teacher coming in every week. Okay, big metric conversion quiz today, class. Uh, first question, how many grams in an ounce? 28. <laughs> yeah, well, 27, once you take the seeds out, it can vary. <laughs> Those good students are struggling. Meanwhile, Cheech and Chong are on the reach for the top team, you know? I don't know, that's how, you know, that's how we get our, you know, formulate our opinions when we're kids. It's not those influences you get, because I don't know, when you're a kid, you know, any influence, you know, you're jumping on every trend. I, I remember when grunge music hit. Overnight, millions of grunge kids suddenly everywhere, scowling, they're always sporting that official grunge look. You know, they're like wearing the flannel, a toque, they're unshaven. Who would have thought the biggest influence on 90s fashion would be Relic from the Beachcombers? <laughs> Oh, yeah, and they're still out there, just most of them have traded in their guitars for squeegee, so... <laughs> Not a bad career move, to be honest, but... I don't know. Some of those influences, too, like, I think the ones that we should really be worried about... You know, some of these games, I think the worst influence for kids is the game Monopoly. So what kind of values do kids learn from Monopoly, you know? I mean, how do you win? You either cheat, right, make yourself banker and start exercising those service charges on every transaction... <laughs> Or if you want to go the honest way, hey, you just have to be the greediest, most ruthless, aggressive jerk on the board, and you break and bankrupt your own friends into submission. It's like Monopoly. You know, apparently the original name, Prick, never caught on. I'll be honest, though, forget the kids. You know, my big worry these days is getting older, you know, because I'm getting up there and I'm watching my grandparents, and that's scary, you know, because, I don't know, granddad, I don't want to say he's frail. I think the operative word here is brittle. <laughs> well, you know, he had those operations. He fell, he broke a hip. He had to get a new hip. Then he fell and broke the other hip. He got another new hip, and now his knees are starting to go. They say they can replace those. Like, at what point does he stop being, Grandpa? <laughs> I don't even know what to say when people ask, you know, hey, Don, you related to that guy? Oh, parts. <laughs> I 
telling you, even Gramps knows it's ridiculous. Plastic hips, plastic knees. He says when he goes, don't worry about a funeral. We can just drop him in the blue box at the end of the driveway. And... <laughs> guys been great, thanks. <laughs> I've uh, never seen our guitar player, Mark Patterson, enjoy certain segments of a comics act more. Yeah. Congratulations, you got the 100th episode of comics. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh. All for you. Now, was that, uh, was that intentional? Well, I actually went to them in the first season, and they said, you know what, Don, we see you more as our 100th comic. So, no, it's, <laughs> I don't know. You know, I did it, and I, I honestly, I got to be, I have mixed emotions about the whole thing. I mean, first of all, I felt, you know, as a native Canadian, geez, why aren't I first? <laughs> but then they explained that they're airing them in order of talent and ability. So, what are you going to do? Right. You know? right. Now, uh, you do some uh, native material in the act, but uh, also, you're not 100% uh, native. What's... Uh... Oh, you're, you're gonna out me right here on the air? Sure. <laughs> well, yeah, no, that's actually, that's very true. Uh, I'm Ojibwe on my father's side, so I'm, you know, full treaty status Indian. Right. But mom is no native blood. She's actually Swedish. So, I mean, you know, wow. yeah, I, I just, not just white. Can't think of anything worse than being native and looking like Custer. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Well, it's funny because, you know, mom always, mom is always too like a, they're not so wimpy when I say mom, by the way. No. Mother is always saying, <laughs> mother is always saying, why don't you explore the Swedish side more, you know, of your culture? And I'm thinking, oh yeah, Ingmar Bergman and the world's highest suicide rates, you know, let's let the laughs begin, you know? <laughs> now you started. <laughs> uh, apparently it takes the sound a little longer to get to that part of the studio. That's... It's one of the producers, he drives a Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, I know, I've known you for a while. You started in the Ottawa Club. Uh, how did you start for those out there who are unemployed comics and want to know how it's done? <laughs> I know those two unemployed comics. <laughs> it's the uh, Wednesday, I mean, you know the Ottawa Club. Yeah. We played there tons of times. Yeah. We've worked together the whole bit. Uh, well, they got the great new talent night. I mean, it's a great club because they actually work with you. You know, they never say, oh, don't do this joke or do this instead. They just right. kind of tell, they just kind of point you in a little direction. It's not just a sink or swim thing. Mm -hmm. So I think it, you know, if you look at some of the talent, it turns out it's, uh, you know, a great club. It's got oh, a great yeah. track Norm record. McDonald, uh, Mike McDonald's from there. Jeremy Hotz. Chris Finn, Jeremy Hotz, yeah. All kinds of great comics that come from the Ottawa Club. Well, I want to thank you very much for coming. And uh, your comics episode airs tomorrow night. That's right. Tomorrow night at 8.30. CBC. All right. <laughs> Stick around for the sounds of BTK.